Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we'll be talking about the properties found on the periodic table. It's... Welcome back. On my table here I've got some examples of some different groups on the periodic table. So let's zoom in and take a look at it. Alright, so I've got some samples to show you here. First off, we have some copper wire, which is obviously a metal. I have some sulfur over here, which is an example of a non-metal. And then right here in the middle, I have some silicon, which is an example of a metalloid or a semi-metal. Okay, so let's talk about some of the properties of each. So, uh, metals, as you can see, are pretty shiny. They're, they have what we call luster. Uh, they are also very malleable, meaning I can bend them, reshape them to make uh, you know whatever it is that, that I want. They are also very good conductors of electricity. So if I stick that in there and you can see that the, the lights do come on. So yes, they do conduct electricity and as such they are also very good conductors of heat. Uh, Nonmetals, on the other hand, are the exact opposite of metals. So if you take a good look at that, there's there's no shininess going on there. That's all just straight up, just very dull. Um, they're also very brittle, right? You can see I can just break them pretty easily uh, right there in, in my fingers. So definitely not malleable at all. Um, and then if I take my electrical conductivity tester, stick it in there, right? Lights definitely don't come on, okay? So not conductors of electricity or of heat. Now, the metalloids, or as some people call them, the semi-metals, are a mix of the two. So this is silicon here, and as you can see, right, so this is pretty shiny, um, so it has luster just like a metal. Uh, it also should, if I can get a good connection there, you can see, yeah, so it does conduct electricity just like a metal. However, check this out. Right, you can see it, it breaks pretty easily. Okay, so it's still brittle. So it's got the, the characteristics of each. So that is metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Now let's talk about some of the the properties of the families that we mentioned in the last video. So the first family is the uh, the alkali metals, which is group one on the periodic table. And for safety reasons, I don't have an actual example of any of them. Uh, because group one metals actually have to be stored in oil because they have this nasty tendency to react violently with water and sometimes even exploding. Um, so what I'll do is I will put a link in the description below uh, for another video where you can actually see what, what that looks like. Now uh, group two are the alkaline earth metals and so here I've got some magnesium which is an alkaline earth metal. Uh, now, the, the alkaline earth metals are also fairly reactive, uh, as you can see from one of the other videos that, that I've done previously. Uh, however, they're not nearly as dangerous as uh, group one, the alkali metals. Transition metals, well, copper is an example of a transition metal, and typically the transition metals are the ones that you think of when you think of, of metals. Um, they're, you know, they're pretty hard, um, as far as like, you know, a, a, um, when you hit them or when you're trying to, to, to bend them, like it's not very easy to cut the, the copper wire here. Um, but the important thing to understand about transition metals is the reason why they're called transition metals is because they have the ability to transition from one uh, charge to another. Like copper, for example, has the ability to either have a charge of plus one or a charge of plus two, depending on the, the need of the situation. So really the only way that we can figure out exactly which type of copper we're, we're dealing with is to look at a reaction, kind of see what exactly it's doing. Um, group seven is the halogens, and I also don't have an example of halogens because, well, they're just as reactive as the, the alkali metals. Um, halogens typically take the form of a gas, and, and as such, um, well, they can be quite toxic to breathe in, so obviously don't have any of those. Now, Group eight is the noble gases. And for an example, I have here a light bulb. You might be thinking, okay, well, what's the deal with, with the light bulb? Well, the noble gases are on, uh, we use a noble gas 
on the inside of this light bulb. Why? Because the noble gases are the only elements on the periodic table that are both neutral and stable. They are non-reactive. So we put noble gases inside light bulbs like this for two reasons. One, because there's a filament on the inside, right? That's actually what lights up on the inside of the, the light bulb. We need to protect it so that it doesn't react to the oxygen, otherwise it will oxidize and it just goes bad. Um, and your light bulb would not have a very long life. Uh, but two, when the, the filament on the inside does excite and, and uh, lights up, we don't want a gas that's going to flame up and react to that. So the, the gas on the inside here keeps everything nice and stable so that when you do use your light bulbs, uh, nothing dangerous is actually happening. Now typically on the inside of a light bulb, just in case you're interested, um, is typically argon is the gas that, that we use for that. All right, so there you go, all sorts of examples. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. If you have any further questions, just comment below or send me an email to chemistrytalk at gmail.com. And if this is your first time watching, thank you so much. Please hit that subscribe button and join us on this adventure known as chemistry. Remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. So